Hello everyone, and welcome back to Heretic, where today we'll be playing episode 4, the first episode added by the Shadow of the Serpent Riders expansion. And it's an interesting one. The first level starts off rather difficult. We're not gonna have much ammo, so I will just run forward, grab a crossbow, anger a Molotar immediately, and try to get some, stu some stuff underneath this crusher, preferably while well, causing various infighting with the gargoyles that were secretly in that room. Grab a backpack, get this Molotar to just start shooting at his saber claw friends, hopefully just deal as much damage as possible. Grab the yellow key to open up the door in the corner there. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to be running in circles here for a minute to just, for one, fight the two snakes. Well, there's four snakes on the top of this tower, and they're all fighting with various enemies here. So while they're doing that, I can just sit here and shoot at them without too much trouble. So that is nice. Would be nice to kill this one because it makes life a little bit easier, I feel. We're just going to try and do the same thing on the other side. We have a pretty decent amount of wand ammo. Watch out for the Ophidians that are inside this cave because we can't actually enter that right now. And also watch out for the Molotar that is continuously going to be shooting at you this whole time. But we're getting a lot of the gargoyles killed by various forms of infighting and other such things. And also many of the Saber Claws definitely don't run towards the Molotar unless you wish for death. But I am not there just yet. I will instead try to just kill that Ophidian over there because it's a little bit easier when these two Ophidians are dead before going on top of that tower which is what we're going to be doing in a second. The two Ophidians are dead I will just make one more loop around this place just to make sure I picked up all the health that I could find. There we go there is one more health power up here and with that go through this teleporter preferably without getting killed by the three or so gargoyles that are hiding out. I have nine health which is not ideal but uh, provided I don't take too much damage, we can make this work. <laughs> Not ideal indeed. With the map, we can tell where West is because opening one of these four banners is going about to open up all of them. So I'm just going to open this, quickly run outside, grab the various health power-ups that await us here, and pretty much use them all immediately because my health is very low. I'm going to try to kill the Ophidians here. Without dying myself, one of them went through the teleporter, unfortunately, which makes life a little bit more tedious. But it's not impossible to deal with. Just gonna try to have him be on that ledge over there and shoot at us for a bit. There we go. And knock him down. There we go. We're gonna ignore the rest of that for now because we have various gargoyles to deal with that are still in this room. They were here from the beginning, but I ran past them. There's also an armor power up over here, which is quite useful. And with all that done, we can enter through the yellow key door, which waits at the start of the level here. Bunch more gargoyles here. I'm actually gonna be using my elven wand some more because again, ammo is quite scarce and I'd rather use my crossbow ammo for later parts in this level when we don't have to deal with gargoyles that can't quite reach us. And the various Saber Claws that don't really know how to live life. Fortunately, because I'm playing on GZ Doom, meleeing enemies is quite easy, so... I can just keep this staff... Use the staff to keep these Saber Claws at bay as much as possible and ignore... The fact that my health situation is, uh, rather low. Alternatively, you can actually just lure them into this Crusher as well, and that... Obviously does the job quite well also, in terms of actually dealing damage to these enemies, but... Do whatever works. I like either way. I'm gonna just kill these remaining ones with the crossbow, but it does cost several shots to actually kill them this way, so that's obviously not the greatest when you're trying to conserve ammo as much as possible. Health back to normal just about. I'm just gonna go here, kill a couple more gargoyles waiting for us at the green key door to press this button, which opens up two of the doors in this previous area, one of which is less dangerous than the other for now so we're gonna go through the dangerous one first otherwise these enemies are gonna be shooting us in the back the entire time and that is not wonderful but slowly but surely we can take care of these cultists destroy them without any real difficulty provided you take your time also this egg that is currently in my inventory i will have a very specific place where i'll be using that so keep that in mind and with all this i'm gonna press this button it opens a door in this previous area. No, it actually doesn't. I guess going through the lowered area here, 
probably opens up that door which we'll be needing to use to reach the next area because it opens up a door with a button that leads to an actual teleporter so that's nice but first of all we're gonna go to this side now we picked up six hourglasses a second ago and uh, i'm gonna be using pretty much all of them in this room right here it's quite small and otherwise quite dangerous i'm just gonna stab this guy with my staff real quick there is two more saber claws but they cannot hear anything and that is quite convenient because it means i can split them up like this and therefore i won't have to waste my ammo trying to deal with two of them at a time which can be a little bit tedious press the button to raise the staircase just gonna select my hourglass here several more buttons real slowly try to grab these gauntlets without triggering the line that opens up everything and with that i will walk into the square also the elevator lowers repeatedly but ignore that lower this jump down use a whole bunch of hourglasses in front of those three mages and hopefully deal decent damage to them i dealt decent damage to two of them which is pretty great the third one sort of died by himself there i'm not sure if any of my projectiles actually hit him so that's quite convenient but fair enough i'll just live with it kill the remaining gargoyles waiting for us up here and grab a couple more life ups and move on not in this lowering elevator but through this door right here which opens up yet more wizards which we're gonna use two hourglasses on and now we have a third one remaining which uh, i'm probably not really gonna use anywhere sensible but Two is usually the amount I can get off before having to run away because otherwise I'm going to die. So I'm just going to use this last one over here. Hope it deals decent damage, but given my health situation, I think I'm just going to take my time. Not worry about life too much. The gauntlets are a pretty decent way of de dealing with these when you have full health, but when the health is a little bit lowered, I'd rather use this staff because it keeps them at bay just a little bit better. Which is to say, the gauntlets really don't keep them at bay at all. And it, you can definitely kill Saber Claws with the gauntlets without taking damage, but it's a little bit fiddly. But with this, a secret is revealed. This is secret number two? One? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Open up two doors to reveal a couple of regular gargoyles and a couple of fire gargoyles. Watch out for the fire ones. The regular ones are never going to go through this little corridor because it's just too tight. And one of them actually went to the side area here, which is not too bad. <sighs> and with that, we can move on. There is also a, a flask over here, which I'm just going to grab. Otherwise, we'll grab it when we grab the green key. But for now, can't quite reach that yet. Going to actually use one and select our egg, because the egg is going to be of pretty vital importance through this teleporter. Because there is a lot of ophidians here and it would be nice if they were lined up a little bit nicer than they are right now also there is a tome of power there but turning the majority of them into chickens is by far the nicest way to deal with this otherwise pretty harsh room it's also quite dark so it can be difficult to see what you're actually shooting at but with that we can lower this grab the dragon claw and i'm just gonna real quick grab this secret area with a chaos device and some ammo for the dragon claw as well and i think there's still an ophidian in this area because i saw some i'm pretty sure i saw an ophidian earlier but i don't see him anymore so maybe the molotar actually killed him so that's lovely with that go through the teleporter once again enter that area because we weren't actually quite done there yet. We still have another thing to grab, and that is at the top of this elevator. Don't really know what the best order of um, things is for this particular portion, but whatever works. Slowly fall down. You don't really need to fall down that slowly to grab the green key, which also opens up four Ophidians, which I definitely remember. But we can just sit here in the corner and shoot at them with our Dragon Claw, because once again, hit scan weapons are cheating so that's very convenient their projectiles are never going to quite hit us while we're standing here unless i walk slightly too far forward which i just did but i'm going to ignore it entirely we can now go through the green key door grab the hell staff and just real quickly run back again shoot the hell staff as much as possible because hell staff ammo we actually have uh, somewhat in abundance but for the most part i'm going to be shooting a lot of it at the molotar there 
First, just gonna kill these remaining gargoyles waiting for us on the side here. There we go. Again, hit scan weapons is cheating, so that's very nice. And with this almost max ammo hell staff, I will just jump down here and just shoot at a Molotar for a while. Obviously, when you're not going for 100% kills, the amount of ammo that you get is quite nice because you don't have to spend all of your health staff ammo on a single enemy. You can also use other weapons, of course, but I found that this works quite well with dealing with them. Plus, I'd rather have to Dragon Claw for the upcoming areas anyway, even though the health staff definitely has its uses, obviously. But he should die in any second now. It has been a lot of health staff ammo. And that is the Molotar dead, which he's not really that much of a threat if you know he's there. But obviously the Molotar, if you don't know, if you feel like trying to kill him early on, you're just going to waste all of your ammo on him. And that's not wonderful, as they say. So with all this done, we can open up this door right here. It has one Saber Claw. Going through the door opens up the remaining doors. And I'm actually just going to keep using my whole staff for this, I think. I don't really have a strategy planned out for this last area because it's it's a mess. It's not really that big of a mess, but it's uh, a lot of things I'd say are functional. So I'm just going to kill these remaining ones with the gauntlets. If you take slow step backwards, you can kill them without them hitting you, but the timing on it is a little bit fiddly and I don't love it that much. So pressing the button here opens up a teleporter, which leads back to the start. It also opens up the door with a iron lich on the other side of it and i'd like to just stand in the corner over here and just watch him shoot me repeatedly hope that he doesn't shoot too many ice projectiles and we're just gonna get this tornado to leave this room as much as i can that's really the main danger of this place trying to get this tornado to go anywhere i'm actually just gonna wait for it use my purple flask because why not and there it goes so this Shadow Sphere, I'm also just going to grab the ammo that I forgot to pick up here. It's going to be useful for this next area. We're going to just sort of jump around the ledge here, which opens up a door, but also starts to raise an elevator in this Ophidian-filled nightmare. And if we wait just a little bit, eventually, we will be seeing various Iron Liches <laughs> uh, raise up there. And I'm just going to try to get as much infighting going as possible. Use our Shadow Sphere there. But preferably if the Ophidians can shoot roughly in my direction, then we can get a lot of infighting going, and that would just really make my life a lot easier. Otherwise, we're just going to have to shoot our health staff in that direction for a while, which also works, obviously. But if all things fail, then at least we still have our Dragon Claw, which very dependently deals with this nightmare fuel here, so that is quite lovely. But it seems like everyone wants to fight the Ophidians, so I can just sit here and shoot a whole bunch of Hellstaff ammo. Pretty much all of it, I, as it turns out, at these Iron Liches. It does seem like at the end the Iron Lich actually did want to fight me, so that's nice. And there is still one remaining, which is sitting in that room over there. And I'm just going to try and kill it from a distance. It was pretty low on health anyway, so that's nice. Now, the Ophidians you can reach right now after, I think, opening the door because it also opens up this secret area. And before I mess up, I'm actually just going to use this Chaos device because I can see myself <laughs> actually using that at the very wrong time and it would just ruin everything. So, with all this, I will use my Tome of Power and this Ring of Invincibility and just start blasting with my crossbow. This is the final secret. There is only three in the level. And we're just going to be going through each of these teleporters to kill the remaining Ophidians here with our Ring of Invincibility Tome of Power combo, which is obviously quite powerful. You can also kill them from the bottom there, and it isn't really that difficult to do, but this is just a lot quicker and a lot nicer. Plus, we don't need to keep our Ring of Invincibility for the next level, because once again, I'll just be starting with the Elven Wand and no items, so might as well use it here. Press this button to open up the next door with a saber claw behind it. Press this button to open up the door with another saber claw behind it. And that should be that. That is all kills and secrets in the first level of episode 4. 
And, uh, let's see, what's our ammo like? Our ammo is in the bottom right. We actually have a pretty significant amount of ammo remaining, so all in all, maybe I was a little bit too careful with my ammo count, but I don't mind it. This level's difficult, and I'm happy to be done with it. <laughs> but that was however that level is pronounced. It is, uh, it's a tricky one, but it is a lot of fun, and... Yeah, first level, 15 minutes to deal with it, and it leads perfectly into level 2 of episode 4, Blockhouse. No map this time, I guess. This level starts off in a large square area with a lot of ophidians and saber claws and such. Each of the corners houses one teleporter, and the first one opens up the moment we either jump into the water or at least kind of touch the angle there. Occasionally when you try to jump down there, it doesn't actually open the teleporter so jumping across one of the corners like that is pretty much one of your safest bets i'm just gonna wake up everything in the hope that everyone's gonna fight each other and then i'm gonna go through the first teleporter which brings us to the center of the square where there is a large amount of ophidians on this wedding cake styled building and every time we touch one of these edges here it lowers one of the levels of the strange structure and what you're supposed to do is jump down and then touch the area that just lowered to lower the elevator to go back up again. And jumping down is what actually opens up the next teleporter. And because of that, one thing you can do is actually just touch the edge of the elevator and that will be enough. So we're just going to go through all of these teleporters here. There is a yellow key in the middle of the structure, and that's ultimately the goal. Just waiting for the snakes to go all the way down before trying to touch the angle. I think I got it, but it was might have been slightly too close. No, I actually did get it. And we're just going to go through each of these areas to collect various weaponry and hourglasses. And the hourglasses are quite good at dealing with the various enemies that are hiding in this central area. Now, I actually forgot entirely to touch the uh, the edge there, so we're just going to go back. Also, enemies can go through teleporters, so that's fun. Hopefully that gargoyle is not going to get lost somewhere along the line. Uh, that's probably good enough. If not, we can just keep trying that indefinitely, but I'd rather not jump down too much. So with all that set and done, we now have the phoenix rod. The yellow key is lowering, and I'm actually just going to wait here for a second so all of the snakes sort of join in the... Uh, edge of this structure here so I can jump down and then throw a whole bunch of hourglasses right in the middle of them and that should deal a decent amount of damage we also picked up an egg which I'm just gonna use here immediately uh, our health is currently 25 but we also picked up an urn so I'm not too concerned and I'm actually going to switch to the Phoenix rod here immediately use that urn at 7 health because I was getting scared and hope that we get some ammo drops from these snakes because once again, the ammo drops from the Ophidians count as significantly more ammo than the regular rocket drops. But it does look like we got a couple. So that is lovely. Our rocket count is 14, and that is more than enough for our purposes. Now, touching the middle of this structure lowers the area towards the yellow key door, which is where we need to go. So I will just do that again. And I will use these remaining three hourglasses at the door, because there's three ophidians right on the other side of this door here, so... I'm just gonna open it up, drop those three down there, and then see what happened. I think we did a decent amount of damage to them, and hopefully they actually fell down into the moat around this area. But reaching this place allows you to pick up the shield, and it also opens up yet four more... three more doors, actually which housed a significant amount of Disciples of Despero, so we are once again just going to run in circles for a little bit, try to cause as much infighting here as possible between the Ophidians and the Disciples. And after a while we're just going to shoot some rockets at them. Because we got so many rockets, I, I'm actually just going to shoot kind of wildly every now and then to just deal with as many of the enemies here as I can. Because it just speeds up the whole process, I'd rather just have everything dead here before we move on. And there is a whole bunch of ammo surrounding this structure as well, so if need be, we can always go back to the center area and pick up the stuff that is around the edges here. But we should be fine for it to actually destroy all the enemies here first. Probably don't need to use two Phoenix Rod shots on the same snake, but 
I'm too lazy to switch weapons from time to time, so that's how it's gonna be. Saving up this Tome of Power for a while, because it's going to be useful against the Molotar that we heard at the very start of the level when we first shot our Phoenix Rod. Not Phoenix Rod, our wand. And once again, enemies can go through teleporters here, which is an interesting experience. It, it, frequently, these disciples have a tendency to just go through the teleporters and end up getting behind you that way, which can be a little bit tedious. But provided that you're a little bit careful and you actually listen to the sounds of the teleporter, then it's not too bad. Just watch out for the enemies that can shoot you through the window there, because there is still a Molotar behind that blue key door, which we'll be dealing with eventually. But for now, I'm just going to kill the remaining enemies that are hiding in the water right now, or fell down here in some other way. Most likely by them getting shot by various hourglasses. Pick up the Shadow Sphere, which is going to be useful later. And just cleaning up. Pick up everything here. A backpack, which I guess you can pick up the backpack a little bit earlier to deal with uh, just slightly easier ammo management. But I kind of like either way, honestly. Like, it's not too difficult to grab the backpack early on, but there is a couple of Saber Claws that can get in the way. And that can be pretty tedious. There is a bunch of gargoyles on just about each side of this area, so just be careful. Also, you might have noticed I just sort of jumped on top of this ledge here, and you need to be somewhat careful with that because the um, floor is all damaging floor, and there is a specific part, or at least two specific parts, where I'd rather jump off of than just... Well, specifically that one. Because there is a flight power-up waiting for us uh, there. I don't know. I don't think you can see that, actually. But we'll just take my word for it. We're going to get a flight power-up soon. And we will be using that to, first of all, go back to the middle area. Because there is a green key awaiting us. Um, on one of the sides of this pyramid, which we will be needing to actually continue with the level. Uh, just take my word for it. It's somewhere. We'll, we'll see it eventually. But for now, since I think most of the gargoyles are dead, I'm actually going to jump down here to grab the flight power-up. Immediately use it so we don't take too much damage from the damaging floor here. And the main reason that I'm here is for yet another flight power-up. But the other main reason, which is truly the main reason, is to get this Ring of Invincibility. Because that is going to make fighting the Molotar significantly easier. And one thing you may have heard is that another Molotar just made some sound. Also, we can use our remaining flight to get back in the middle here without having to use the teleporter. But there is yet another Molotar waiting for us in this place, and uh, I'd rather have every single bit of technology available before trying to deal with him. So just picking up all the ammo and health and whatnot waiting for us here. Switching to my Phoenix Rod and getting the Shadow Seer ready to use against a couple of Iron Liches and to not have their tornadoes home in on me and also to have the blue projectile just go through me so that was lovely. Pick up the blue key, immediately run back and I'm just gonna stand around the edge here for a second because I'd like to have that Molotar and the Iron Lich fight each other for a second. That would just really make my day. If not, I will just start shooting at this Iron Lich. There is another Iron Lich on the other side as well and I I think? I thought they looked like they were intending to fight with each other. I think the Molotar is actually fighting the Iron Lich right now, so that is convenient. And I'm just going to wait for him to die through the means of getting repeatedly hit by a Molotar before using my Ring of Invincibility, my Tome of Power, and using the old Flamethrower to deal with this particular Molotar, hopefully as quickly as possible. And after that, we need to rush a little bit because there is yet another Molotar and using this Ring of Invincibility and this Chaos device, it can put me immediately next to him and then get flung into the water, use up yet another... Oh my god. <laughs> it doesn't seem like the Molotar wants to work with me today. But hopefully we can at least deal a reasonable amount of damage before we have to switch to the Hellstaff. Our Tome of Power is running out, so I will switch to the Hellstaff because the splash damage isn't going to do any damage for my Phoenix Rod. So I'm just going to stay far away, 
Even though I'm invincible, I'd rather him just uh, be away from me as much as possible. I'd rather him not be in the water, if I'm being perfectly honest, but it is what it is. We can use our distance to take care of him this way. And definitely, if he doesn't throw you in the water repeatedly, the tome of power that you still have from the previous Molotar is enough to deal with him. But, you know, what are you going to do? Sometimes the Molotar does not want you to kill him, and today was one of those days. One more Ophidian at the end here, which I'm just going to tank all the damage. Nearly actually uh, got pretty low there, <laughs> but don't worry about it. And with that, we're actually done. There's no secrets in this level. So we press the button, go through the teleporter, and call it a day. It's kind of a confusing level the first time you do it, just because the start isn't immediately obvious. Um, partially because the green... The teleporter next to the green door doesn't always open when you jump into the water, and that just makes everything kind of confusing. But also, jumping on the structure to lower the elevator at the start, it's not very self-explanatory. But at the same time, once you're down there, there's really no way to get back up again, so you just gotta try some stuff and see what sticks. And eventually you'll get through the thing, but it's uh, yeah, visually confusing. But overall, not too difficult if you know what you're doing. But that takes us to episode 4, mission 3, Ambulatory. This level starts off next to a small maze. You start over here with the weird ceiling tiles and picking up hourglasses on the way as the path darkens so we can remember where we went to. If we do not follow this path exactly, there's going to be a lot of crushers crushing our way down. And it's not exactly dangerous because it's... Also tiled crusher, so you can take this little shortcut and only this area will go up and down. But it's a little bit tedious when this entire area is filled with crushers, so this is, uh, this is alright. But with the crossbow weight we grabbed from the other side, we can't actually do anything else there because all the doors are locked, but we can more easily kill these gargoyles with the various hourglasses that we picked up through the maze. And also use our crossbow every now and then. I do actually kind of like having a little bit of Elven Wand ammo for a section coming up, but at the same time it doesn't really matter too much. Jumping down here puts you on this walkway which raises. If you fall down, you're dead, so don't. That would be bad. And wait for this to slowly rise. There is Nitro Golems on that side, so also watch out for those if they decide to go outside because they're quite tedious. And also this actually opens up, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer to do that because I want slightly more ammunition for what is behind that place. So opening up this door, kill the undead warrior, move along, try not to get crushed by any of the crushers, and I'm making a couple more go up and down, which makes it more visually confusing, but overall it's not too bad. Try not to throw these guys in the lava too much. I'm actually not 100% sure if they die to lava down there, because there is a bunch of those little geysers that shoot the fireballs up and down, and that might just work fine, but I'm honestly not too sure. And again, watch out for those nitro golems over there, because they want you dead, and I'd rather not be dead. So over here, a couple gargoyles, nothing too much to worry about. The main reason we're here is for the dragon claw, which is waiting right, right here. Pressing this switch lowers the green key, which is uh, surrounded by a bunch of exploding balls. We'll get to that. First of all, I'm just going to go back again, try not to get nitro golems in the face too hard. And we will finally go through that blinking door here. Because there is a couple golems, which is not too bad. A singular Disciple of the Sparrow, which I'm just going to shoot behind this pillar with the Elven Wand. Making you more or less entirely safe. And provided you don't shoot when this door opens, you're not in really any danger right now. But I am going to create some danger here because I want to use at least one hourglass to wake them up a little bit. I think that wakes all of them up. If not, just shot a bullet, so now they're all awake. And I'm actually going to just use a couple hourglasses there. Hopefully didn't hurt myself too bad with that. But hopefully at least did some damage to these iron liches here. Now we did pick up a Tome of Power there, so if need be, we can use the Tome of Power with the Elven Wand to deal with these remaining iron liches. Uh, this is kind of tedious, but hopefully they decide to look around the corner and... That way I don't have to deal with this singular tornado that's here forever. But it's just nice to get these guys taken care of right now because these particular iron liches become a bit of an issue if you don't deal with them right now. And there are other ways to deal with them, but this is 
I'd say a preferred method just due to the fact that you're considerably safer from their attacks over there than you would otherwise be. Maybe I can get a couple of shots off here on some of the nitro golems, that would be nice. Just a little bit of a long distance shooting gallery here, but hopefully we can get some damage on that way. I would actually like to have the Tome of Power here to deal with the two Disciples of Despair waiting for us here. And I probably should have just destroy these balls, but, you know, what are you going to do? There we go. That gave us a Morph Ovum and a Shadow Sphere. Now, the Shadow Sphere could also be used to fight against the Iron Liches, but once you're down here... You can't actually get back up that side. And that's kind of an important part of that secret area because when you go up here, it lowers those two walls and also lowers this where all the Iron Liches were. And suddenly it becomes significantly more dangerous. But because we dealt with them like this, no worries at all. Going through these walkways, there is a couple of gargoyles and fire gargoyles. Not too much to worry about. A couple of doors opened here with some golems and we will be passing through this further i'm just going to deal with these golems and then move away again the fire mace can spawn over here but it did not for me this time the fire mace can also spawn there um just trying to shoot in that direction really i'm just trying to make these things explode because it looks fun but yeah the fire mace can also spawn on that side um it didn't this time so i'm just gonna move on actually i know where it's gonna spawn because it's I've played this level before and uh, everything is on my power. But yeah, uh, the behind the green door is also the location of a fire mace. And I mean, I'm willing to bet it's going to be there. It's going to be pretty exciting. But after picking up the green key, this area opens up. And it actually leads you back to the crusher area without having to deal with the lava pit again. So that is lovely. But it also opens up this area right here. But there's a couple more fire golems, a backpack, which is always nice, and a secret area, which primarily has fire mace ammo, but it also has some dragon claw ammo as well, so that is lovely. Really the main reason why we came here. And with all that said and done, we can now open up the green key door, which is waiting for us over here. Yet another undead warrior, a fire mace surprisingly spawned behind this green door. What a treat. And with that button pressed, we have yet another area accessible in the walkway land. This time towards the nitro golems that were waiting for us previously. And if I could just use a couple of our glasses here, that would be nice. I selected them, very good. Because that does just deal with a lot of the danger here. There's a couple of regular golems there as well, so there is a little bit of infighting going on, but not really anything mentionable, honestly. There's just not enough going on there. This leads us to the place where I'm going to use an egg because there is a lot of nitro golems in this area as well. And they are all hidden behind this little wall over here. And if I just turn as many of them into chickens, open up the area, which lowers it, and then just shoot some chickens, it makes the battle significantly easier. It's always a little bit difficult to tell if you've killed all the chickens this way, unfortunately, because for one, this area is not fun to look at, but also. Because chickens in water is just a splashing effect, really. It's not much of a model that you can still see. And after doing all that, we're going to go, first of all, to the other side of this arena where the health staff awaits us. There is a switch here, which we can press to lower this area right here. And picking up the Tome of Power opens up this door, which allows you to get to this switch which lowers the blue key. And that is, in casual playthroughs, a confusing one. Especially when you're playing in multiplayer, I can say for sure. But also, in front of the Tome of Power, you can open this door. I'd rather not right now, because we also opened up yet another pathway over here after picking up the blue key, I believe. And that leads to that same area you would otherwise go, only in a slightly different way. First of all, we can pick up this chaos device. Also, the fire mace can spawn right here. It did not because I already picked it up elsewhere. And you can go through this door right here, which takes you to the same place, only from the above bit rather than the lower bit. And that's nice because even though we can quite clearly look through this, from the other side, it's actually a fake wall. So very easy to uh, 
get shot by a pretty substantial amount of fire gargoyles and not really being able to tell what's shooting you, so that's kind of tedious. But this is the same wall that we could have otherwise opened up. And with that, we can move onwards to the crusher area with our blue key. Hopefully not get crushed. That was actually <laughs> pretty close, but fair enough. It worked out. Kill the ghostly undead warrior with our health staff quite easily. And with that last button pressed, we can go into the final area opened up through walkway passages. Once again, gonna grab my hourglasses because there's a pretty substantial amount of fire gar nitro golems here. Uh. And the hourglasses are very capable of dealing with those. Walking into this room lowers a couple of areas also filled with nitro golems. So I'm just going to run in here and try to deal with these first, then run to the other side and realize that there were really only those? No, there's another one. There we go. Now on this side, there is a, a weird little circle area, but if you open this, you also open up this area behind you, which has a 200 armor power up, but also the fire golem enters this area from the door you just opened. Moving a little bit further forward, yet another fire golem, a morph ovum, which is going to be useful for just a little bit. And just a whole bunch of really good power-ups. It's just a really nice place to be. So with that, we're going to go to the other side of this place, which also opened up after entering that room. Uh, there's a golem right here, I believe. And more or less just a dead end. Some fire mace ammo, which I'm not going to bother with. All in all, I have a lot of power-ups right now, and it's pretty great. Most importantly is the Morph Ovum for this particular instance, because I want to turn a lot of these mages into chickens. Oh, accidentally looked up. Mind the Molotor that is hiding there, because he is sitting behind that caged area. And that's an area where we could have gone to much earlier than we are honestly doing it, but... I decided to wait a little bit because it's just really nice to have the Phoenix Rod and the Invincibility and the Tome of Power combination available because it just makes this fight significantly quicker. One could argue that you don't really need the Invincibility for this particular Molotar because it usually plays quite nicely, but I don't know. I like having the combination available. You actually died really quickly. Not really sure why he died so quickly, but I'll take it. Moving along. Going all the way downstairs one more time to the area we were just in. There's a lot of shortcuts available to us now, so that's nice. Opening up the exit door by pressing these two buttons allows you to open the door. And opening that door also opens up this area right here, which has a couple of enemies, namely those two Disciples of Despero, but also a bunch of gargoyles. And also, also, it has this Iron Lich. And this Iron Lich is not going to hit you if you do this. And, you know, that, it's just nice. It just means you have to hold the button for a while. So that's lovely. Even the tornadoes disappear instantly, which is a shame. Because you can actually use the tornadoes to just jump over this. And that's kind of fun. But this time, I'm just going to fly over it just for fun. And I believe that more or less concludes it. I believe also that the fire mace can spawn here. Somewhere over here, I think. That seems right. And with that, I'm just going to open this door, pick up the tome that the, the disciple dropped earlier. And we're just going to call it a day. That's all kills and secrets. Let's move on. This level is confusing in casual playthroughs. And I remember playing it in multiplayer with my friends and it... Really, uh, when one person picks up that Tome of Power that opens up a different door and you're not aware that that's going on, it can be very difficult to tell where you're supposed to go. But once you know where you have to go, it's not that difficult. It's primarily the three Iron Liches that can really cause some problems if you don't know what you're doing. But if you have a strategy for those, then the rest of the level more or less speaks for itself. So, quite lovely. With that, we are going to Episode 4, Mission 4. Sepulcher? Sepulcher? I don't know. Here we are in a very spooky looking area with a large quantity of hourglasses near the walls. And also a bunch of elven wand ammo. 
and a spooky looking door that we cannot interact with at this moment. So with all these hourglasses, I'm just gonna run inside, ignore all the golems, run inside one room to get way more golems in this tiny room. And now we're gonna use a couple of hourglasses to hopefully get rid of a lot of them very quickly. Because the hourglasses are very capable of dealing with them. But also it's just nice to, for one, get this room to be entirely empty. And for two, get the power-ups that were hiding inside the rooms that contained the ghost golems that were inside this room. I can quite safely just sit here and shoot my elven wand for a while without uh, anyone really damaging me, so that's nice. But for the most part, you want to have this urn, you want to have a shadow sphere that's over here, and you want to have the backpack because it allows you to carry much more ammo. And of course, phoenix rod ammo never hurts. Moving onwards, these gargoyles generally struggle to actually reach you as long as you're in the uh, opening here. So you can just hold the attack button. And in this room, there can be a fire mace right in the middle here, but not this time, unfortunately. Moving onwards towards this pedestal, there is a couple gargoyles here. It leads us to a room with a whole bunch of graves, tombstones, whatever they're called. A couple of undead warriors and a crossbow in the back. And picking up the crossbow lowers this thing and raises a whole bunch of walls that were hiding a couple of golems. Pressing that button lowers a wall with a button behind it. And pressing that button uh, lowers a wall with a button behind it. And pressing that button lowers a wall with a button behind it. But pressing this button doesn't quite do the same thing. Now this level has two exits. A regular exit and a secret exit. And the exit is covered by two doors. And the first door, you just press the button that's on the other side of the map. I'll deal with that one eventually. But the second door uh, is not actually connected to pressing this button at all, really. This just gets you back to the start of the level again. And there's also a couple of Disciples of Despero waiting for us here. And hopefully that hourglass did some damage to these guys. Yeah, it probably did. Anyway, the main... The actual way to open up the regular exit, which is in the middle right there, is to enter this place, and that's all you really need to do. But it can be quite easy to uh, accidentally forget to go in here and suddenly have a door blocking you to actually leave the level if you're trying to go for the regular exit, so... It's a little peculiar, but it is what it is. You can also go to this side, they both work the same for some reason, and it's all fair enough. Moving onwards, just gonna grab this armor and this torch. Getting the torch opens up that room with a whole bunch of ghostly undead warriors. And we're just gonna stand to the side here and hopefully not die to the ghostly undead warriors. Probably a good idea to use the Shadow Sphere here or the um, Chaos Device that I had in my inventory and I used by accident. Both are very capable of dealing. I guess the Chaos Device isn't even a terrible idea because your angle on this side is significantly better than... Uh, dealing with them in that tiny hallway so yeah actually i stand by that choice <laughs> um also the fire mace can spawn in this room but with that i'm just gonna grab this secret area there is now a bunch more gargoyles in the starting area and also this wall has lowered at some point i'm actually not 100 percent sure when this lowers but it is important that it lowers because in order to open this door, which is actually two doors behind each other. You need to go over this little thing and the little thing that's going to open up a little bit later. But we've opened one of the two doors and we can move on to the next area right here where there is a whole bunch of undead warriors. I'm actually going to just use my shadow sphere here, I think. Press this bird to make the thing go down. And when the bird has lowered, uh, well, the platform has lowered rather, you can step onto this new area that the undead warriors were standing on, which will then lower this thing. And pressing this button actually opens up the level exit. So we could just leave right now, but there is still like half of a level remaining. Now our ammo is not great, but fortunately after opening up this door, we can walk through it in just a moment. And we can get some new ammo using the doors that open after going through it because there's actually uh, a 
bunch more golems over here. All nitro golems as well, so be a little bit careful. I'm hoping that hourglass actually did something, because it didn't really look like it did. <laughs> it looked like I aimed it pretty badly. But I'm actually just going to sit here with my wand for a while to kill golems, I think, because uh, that is unfortunately what happens when you fail to hit a thing. Because ammo is... it's not like super scarce or anything, but you can get into these situations where you're out of ammo for a second. But there is 28 crossbow bolts in these two rooms and that is more than enough to deal with this next area right here. So moving onwards, a bunch more golems. There's like regular golems and nitro golems here, but they're like there's a little amount of infighting going on, but not a whole lot. Overall, not nothing too exciting here. We're just going to deal with these remaining undead warriors. You can get onto this platform over here. And I believe the fire mace can also spawn in front of this switch, which we'll be pressing in a second. I'm just going to grab all the ammo in the world here. Going to grab these remaining hourglasses. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use them, but why not? And press this switch right here, which lowers us to the phoenix rod and also has an iron lich right here which i'm just gonna deal with with my hit scan weaponry because it's all a little bit too close for comfort to use the phoenix rod on him and after going through this it opens up this side it has also at some point opened up this wall which i'm sure happens somewhere in that hallway i'm honestly again not super sure when it happens but stepping over this line right here opens up the other door and pressing that button allows us to go to the area underneath the platform with the undead warriors and these undead warriors are just a little bit easier to kill with a phoenix rod than they are with uh, the early weaponry there so i'd rather just deal with them like this there's a pretty significant amount of ammo in this or um, enemies rather in this secret area i'm just gonna grab this hell staff that's uh, i think the only one in this level which is uh, hiding in a Pretty, pretty secret area, honestly. And we're just going to start blasting. I'm going to see if I can use my Phoenix Rod on these Disciples here, because they are quite close to each other. And try not to get overrun. We do still have seven flasks, so it's not like we're in any real trouble here, but it's always good to be careful. I'm actually just going to use this Tome of Power, because I still have it anyway. Probably could use that somewhere else in the level, but that's okay. Because there is also another Tome of Power in this area, which... You can grab by pressing this switch right here, which raises a couple staircases. I'm actually going to go back here because after grabbing that weapon, it opened up a whole bunch of walls here. But if you kill, like if you go through this hallway first, then all the gargoyles that are hiding behind those walls will just sit really close next to each other and it makes them a lot easier to kill that way. Now before our Tome of Power ends, I'd like to shoot at least twice with our... Uh, there we go. Just get a whole bunch of rain going there. Hopefully deal as much damage as possible to the Iron Lich. And pretty much just kill them with the rain alone. I'm actually surprised how powerful that is from time to time. And just gonna go up here. There is a Fire Mace up here. It can also spawn on the other side right there. But for me, that's not the way it is. And I'm actually just gonna grab that Tome of Power real quick as well. Because might as well have something like that for the remaining enemies of this level, which are all hiding next to this crossbow. Pretty much the same situation as the other side, just a whole bunch of gargoyles that are uh, all sitting in roughly the same area. Just gonna wait here for a second and then start shooting them with my crossbow, which should get rid of them quite quickly. I could use an egg on them, I guess, why not? Still at it anyway, might as well use it from time to time. And. I think that's all the kills. We're still missing two secret areas. And you might have seen it on the map, but there is a, a fake wall here, which I don't think it really has any anything like distinguishable from a regular wall, but yeah, fair enough. You can just walk through it. Picking up this Ring of Invincibility also lowers an area right here. And that is the last remaining secret and also the secret exit leading us out of here it's odd it's an odd level um if you try to go for the secret level it's very easy to just get lost because that fake wall is very missable but fair enough the rest of the level is pretty cool i still think it's kind of weird that 
the fourth button doesn't actually lower the regular exit, but you need to just hit a specific part of the level for some reason. That's almost like a secret area as well. Like, those two areas are very close to each other. But it is what it is. It's a neat little one. We are going to episode 4, mission 9, the mausoleum. Before we begin, I'm adding a seizure warning to this level due to the fact that all the hallways have continuous lights going on and off. So watch at your own discretion. Starting the level in three seconds from now. Now, to give you an idea of this level, there is five really long hallways surrounding us right now. And uh, they, yeah, they stretch on for a while. And at any point in this level, there's only one place you can actually go. Like, you press the button and then another area opens and you just have to go from area to area repeatedly. So with that in mind, we're going to go to the first place, which is behind this wall, which looks pretty similar to most of the level. Press this switch, which also, there is a crusher here with a backpack. The backpack's pretty important, the rest not so much. And I haven't fired my gun yet, because otherwise these golems here are going to be in a bad place. But going through that teleporter, which has opened up after pressing that button in the other room, we are going to fight in darkness for a second here, which I don't know how well this is going to show up on YouTube, but it's pretty much just gargoyles in this room, so there's not that much to look at. There is a crossbow here, which is lovely. I'm just going to do a small run around to pick up all the ammo that I can get. And then we can go to either of these bird walls to open up the area. Somehow another gargoyle is still alive. That needed three crossbow bolts, very cool. Open up the door. There is a lot of enemies. And basically at any point in this level, if you get lost, you just look for the wood texture and then you're back at the start of the level again. Leaving this room opens up a whole bunch of pillars in the middle that were previously there with hourglasses underneath them. I will just try to get one hourglass because after that the crushers start lowering there, so be careful of that. And we are going back to the teleport room, which we used previously to get into that room, to go into the next area. And I'm actually just going to use one hourglass there and try not to take too much damage from these gargoyles here. There is a giant pillar in the middle of this room, and if you shoot it, it actually goes up. And you need to do that to progress the level, which is kind of interesting, because that's not a thing that I think has happened so far in this game. It usually, stuff like that is reserved for like very specific secret areas in Doom 1, but other than that, I don't really know of many places in this game, up until this point at least, where you actually have to shoot something to continue, other than enemies, you know? So, it's a little unusual, and most of the time you'll shoot that pillar in the middle by shooting the gargoyles, like I just did. But, it is still possible to miss actually shooting the pillar and then you're effectively just stuck in this room because this room is uh, quite small like it just ends over here in this door you cannot actually interact with with a bunch of undead warriors behind it because uh, we angered those earlier when we did a shot in a long hallway now just a couple golems here i'm actually going to use this chaos device in a second because pressing this button is going to open up a whole bunch of walls with um disciples behind them and I just want to open up everything to cause a little bit of infighting, hopefully, by going here uh, and try to leave the room. We actually need to leave the room to open up the third teleporter in this room. And just having the chaos device for that is really convenient because it is just a safe way to get out of there. And I'd rather have slightly better weaponry when dealing with the room with all of the disciples because in this room is yet another button to continue with the level, but also a Dragon Claw. Need to run through some lava to get it, unfortunately, but other than that, not too terrible. And once again, we're just gonna look for the wood texture to go back to the start of the level. That's really my only reference point in this place. So we can go back through teleporter number two to clear out the room with all of the disciples in it. Which is a little bit easier with the Dragon Claw, provided you don't get stuck on a Disciple somewhere along the line. And hopefully we can get some infighting going on between this Golem and all the other Golems and the Disciples as well. But it doesn't look like they really want to cooperate with me right now, so... I'm just gonna get my Dragon Claw out and try to deal some damage here. 
My crossbow bolts are a little bit low. I don't have much ammo for that right now, but there is 30 bolts on the other side of this room, which opened up after we touched it briefly before teleporting out of here. And I'd rather keep this Tome of Power for now. It's unfortunate how little infighting we managed to get going there, but at least the enemies are dropping some ammo, so that's nice. Also, stepping into this area with the 30 crossbow bolts lowers the entire midsection there, which is good because there's various health power-ups and other things that these disciples are going to be dropping from time to time. So if we can just get some goods out of that. Having a surprisingly high amount of enemies actually follow me around this time, but it is what it is. Just trying to clear out this middle area so we can get the flasks that are hiding on top of these lowering walls. But with all that, watch out for the undead warriors outside. Because they are still hanging out. They're hopefully fighting some of the golems at least, so that's nice. But they are the enemies that I want to use this Tome of Power on. Combined with the Dragon Claw. Because it does. it is a large amount of undead warriors that are caged in there. And... We are going to be going there next, and we're going to teleport in the middle of that room. And I'd rather not be surrounded by undead warriors when trying to do that. So, just going to be walking back and forth here for a second. Use up a lot of my Dragon Claw ammo, which is fine. Maybe a couple of crossbow shots there. And with that, turn to the left, turn to the right. Before you know it, we're back at the start of the level. And we can go into the his area right here which has opened up after going through the the third teleporter um in the teleporter room where there is also a couple of disciples of the sparrow and sometimes they get stuck like this behind the torches and then they effectively do nothing because the torches keep you safe entirely and with that, we are just going to take full advantage of that to try and kill these because if you don't kill them, they have a tendency to go through some of the teleporters that are inside this room. And that's bad. <laughs> that, that puts you in really rough situations. But we're just going to go downstairs here. We can't really go anywhere else in this room right now to go into the room with all the undead warriors we just destroyed. Get the hell staff and press this button to raise a pillar that is hiding a teleporter in the room with the giant staircase that we were just in. Grabbing all the ammo that we can, which more or less resolves our ammo problems for the remainder of this level, especially with the health staff, and go through back through the teleporter which we previously went through to get into that room to begin with. So, this area is entirely filled with lava. But fortunately, this is dark and shiny lava, and that doesn't damage you. But if you go into the regular lava, you do take damage, so don't step in that just yet, because that's bad. Carefully deal with all the enemies here. There's three secrets inside this room, uh, and I'll be going back for those, because the inside of those secrets is just a little bit too tedious to deal with right now, in our current situation. But going through this door, we are once again back next to the staircase. Gonna go grab the Ring of Invincibility at the top here. This is one of the teleporters that I believe opened up after pressing that button. Ah, eh, that's the only one actually, fair enough. Because we are going back in there, teleport into this room, use our Ring of Invincibility to get in the lava, and open door number one. Kill everything here with our Hell Staff, and then move on as quickly quickly as possible to the next secret. I grabbed a Shadow Sphere in that secret area, which is going to be important later. Uh, and that's really the main thing. The rest here is a lot of health power-ups for the most part. Some ammo for the Phoenix Rod, which is always great. And a Mystic Urn, which is quite lovely, of course. <sighs> Alright, so with that... We can go up the stairs and actually go through the teleporter. And this teleporter... If you don't kill those disciples in the previous room with the stairs, then often a disciple will just be in this room and just hit you immediately, and that's just the worst. So, in this area, blue banners mean doors. And there is also other areas in this level with blue banners, and that they don't mean doors there, it's, it's just this place. <laughs> because of course it does. 
And we're just gonna hell staff our way through here, try to kill these disciples at the top of the stairs that we can't quite shoot at unless we aim up. And quite frankly, I refuse to press the aim up and down button, so we're just gonna keep tanking some of those hits there. Go back up the next staircase with even more gargoyles and disciples at the top. And now that this disciple is dead, I'm gonna go back downstairs because we missed one blue banner which we can open up with a couple of enemies behind it. This is secret number four, I believe, with a couple of disciples behind some doors that open up the moment you enter the area. But the hell staff is very good at keeping them at bay. And there is a flight power up here which makes this next area a little bit more tolerable because it can quite easily go wrong due to the fact that it's, it's just a bunch of jumps over a giant lava pit. And if we wait here for a second, well, first of all, that gargoyle is just going to show up, I guess. But also, there is a Disciple of the Sparrow at the very end of this room. And that can be quite tedious to get shot by when you're trying to do this tiny jumping puzzle. And also, like, he just keeps shooting the moment you are in range of him at all. And in range really just means in the same room as him, so... Be a little careful, but now that he's dead, we can just sort of walk forward here, and if we fail... We can just fly back up. Because we used our invincibility in that lava secret room, we don't really need the flight anywhere else. Otherwise, you can do it with the flight, but again, it's just a little tedious to fight those undead warriors in there. And I kind of like using the invincibility for that. Moving on, uh, we are once again back at the start of the level, more or less. I'm actually just going to shoot some golems here inside corridors, because there is a pretty substantial amount of nitro golems waiting for us here and we can just keep shooting at them from a distance like this hopefully deal with all of them that gargoyle is actually quite annoying and i'm kind of hoping that he's just gonna fly towards me but i guess i could just also just run towards him and shoot him like this <sighs> we're going back to this hallway where there's also a large quantity of nitro golems trying to shoot at us from a distance but again, the hell staff is quite adequate at just shooting through hallways and trying to kill nitro golems like this, so that's quite nice. And now we are going to go back to the room with the staircase because a third teleporter has opened up here at the bottom of this staircase. And this one is just a bunch of long hallways for the most part, really. It's not too bad. Um, it's actually not a terrible place to still have the Tome of Power available as well, if you do. Due to the fact that you can just use the powered up wand in this place. And I feel like I usually do have a Tome of Power here, so I might have actually missed that. Accidentally used the Phoenix Rod in my own face rather than the Hell Staff, but it is what it is. For the most part, this works. Provided you don't get hit by too many red axes, you can speed this up a little bit. We have a lot of flasks at our disposal as well, so it doesn't really matter too much if we take a lot of damage, but preferably, obviously, try to be at least a little bit careful. But with the pain states that these enemies go in from time to time, it's not too bad. You just go through increasingly narrowed halls and shoot them as much as you can. And eventually you reach the end, get another Tome of Power, and stepping onto the lowered maze will lower this platform right here with a yellow key. Which is the thing we need to actually leave this level. So with that, uh, step on this platform, otherwise the door doesn't open, that's a pretty important one. And we're going to go to the wood texture once more, once I sort of get my bearings here, because I've gotten a little bit lost, I'm not gonna lie. We're gonna go through this little circle, which we could have gone through at any point, but uh, I think we didn't really have a reason to because no one here actually hears you, so that's nice. And we can't really do anything here either due to the fact that you need a yellow key to go through the only door in this place. So with that, we are just going to destroy everything here and open up this yellow key door. There is an iron lich hiding there. You might not be able to see him because he's hiding so well. But shooting our phoenix rod at him destroys him quite easily. Going into the room opens up a couple of walls with a couple of disciples behind it. A couple of phoenix rod shots and a couple of dragon claw shots after that. More than enough to deal with everything in this room. No problem at all. And from this point on, we can press these two buttons to lower the exit, raise the stairs, and we could leave. But entering this area has also opened up another door this time around. Also, 
the gauntlets are there, I guess, in case you want them. They exist. They're lovely. Because this door has opened up after going to the exit. And if we press this switch, I'm actually just gonna take the dragon claw here. We're just gonna ignore that iron lich that is on, to, on the platform that um, <laughs> lowers the moment you press that switch and you're on the other side of the room. And I'm gonna go in here because this counts as a secret area. Because I guess because it opens after you effectively beat the level. Please stop blowing me around. And now we're just gonna go do a loop through the edges of the level because there's still a whole bunch of enemies remaining. Uh, and actually I'll just use a dragon claw here because there is yet another iron lich which I'd like to take care of carefully. Uh, I should die any second now. There we go. And I think I'm just gonna go around the other way without having to wait for those tornadoes because I cannot be bothered and there is a large amount of golems still alive right now on this side. And we're just gonna shoot our hell staff in that rough direction and hope that we deal as much damage as possible while trying not to get hit by the many faces to deal with yet another iron lich. <laughs> That is on the other side of this corner. And this is where, especially in a casual playthrough, you get so lost and then suddenly you aggro a bunch of Iron Liches as well and it really ruins everything. It just makes this place so dangerous. Also, there's this whole area, which I haven't even talked about. Because there is technically another area you can go into at the start of the level. This is sort of unattached to everything. And it's a little unusual that it even exists due to the fact that there's nothing really here except for a couple of power-ups. It's not even a secret area. But there's a torch, there's an egg, there's some fire mace ammo and stuff like that. And that's more or less all there is. I'm happy with the health staff ammo at least, so that's nice. But for the most part, it's it's a rough place. There's a lot more health staff ammo in between these areas as well. But we're just gonna keep going. Take our route through here. I think there's like five enemies remaining, most likely because I tend to miss one hallway. There we go. Containing these golems. And I say there's five enemies, but there's definitely at least four more at the start as well, because that's the reason we got this Shadow Sphere early on in the level. Because there is four doors that we can open, and opening one opens up all four of them and has a power up behind it. And picking up the thing behind it is going to open four more doors um, with an Iron Lich behind every single one of them. And having the Shadow Sphere available for that is obviously quite nice. The other two are all the way to the other side here. And just gonna shoot a whole bunch of rockets with our Shadow Sphere active. Not much to worry about. And each of these areas that house an Iron Lich can also hold the Fire Mace. This time around it's in that one for me, but for anyone else it could be in any one of those four doors. <sighs> but that's all kills and secrets in this level and my god this in our multiplayer playthrough this was the level that really exhausted us because it's such a mess it's so difficult to tell where you have to go especially just finding that first step which is just opening a wall because there's so many walls that have a different texture on it in this level and then that specific one has a slightly different texture and that's the one you have to open to open up a teleporter somewhere else. But if you don't know that teleporter is there, you're just gonna be running through hallways and it's... Oh my god. It is by far my least favorite level to play casually and even knowing how to beat it now, it's such a drag because you just have to find spots that you can remember where to go because it all looks the same <laughs> it's all just hallways uh, but fair enough that's the end of the mausoleum putting us back into the regular levels once again episode 4 mission 5 great stair now here we start off in a large empty room with a whole bunch of nothing except for one wall which looks slightly different than all the other ones and we actually do need to go there to get the crossbow but also to progress in the level because if we go here, it will lower various walls here. And if we step on any of those green platforms, it's going to open a door to the rest of the level. But it also lowered four areas here with a bunch of were dragons on each corner. 
And that is just wonderful. There is safer ways to do this by just luring them into that room, but that room is also filled with a couple of fire gargoyles. And it's not too terrible to try and do it like this. The moment we also step on one of these corners, it's going to open the door to the next area as well. So I'd rather deal with the fire gargoyles first. Carefully here. Before moving onwards to the next area. Because the next area, there's just a lot of were dragons in this level. And I'd rather take it carefully. So you might have already heard the door open. I'm actually going to grab a couple flasks as well. Which are hiding over here. And over there. And there is a quiver immediately to the left. I just want to press a button and then leave again. Took two pretty substantial hits, so that's unfortunate. Also, there's some ammo over here, which is nice. And over here, we have were dragons and fire gargoyles to the left and right. So I'm just going to press this button, which is going to make these stairs go up. And that is great because it means that some of the were dragons are slowly coming down now. And we won't have to fight them in the middle of two groups of were dragons, but we can just take them down sort of one at a time. So that's significantly easier than trying to fight them from the middle there. Makes life just a lot nicer. There is also a different colored banner there, but this particular different colored banner is not relevant. This is not a secret area. Don't worry about it. And I feel like there might still be another were dragon at the top here as there often is. Watch out for the ones that I kept alive to the right over there because they are out in the open in this place, but they are quite easy to shoot from this direction. You just gotta watch out for the fireballs being thrown from the ones up top. But I kind of prefer fighting them like this rather than at the start just because you have a little bit more movement room here, so that is nice. And this particular banner, even though it's the same as that one, you can actually press the use key which will lower you to this area with yet another were dragon and a morph ovum over here and i believe the fire mace can also spawn in this room somewhere not exactly sure where but somewhere in that room but we're just going to move on grab as much stuff as possible while ignoring the were dragons ignoring the ophidians on the side and the were dragons on the corners of that room as well the fire mace can also spawn on the northeastern section of that room there, so if you want the fire mace, it might have spawned there next to one of the were dragons. I believe like the clo that one over there, the closest one to the right. So just take my word for that one. <laughs> it's probably true. Anyway, yellow keys over there. The way to get it is to enter that middle structure. And we're just going to do that. The skull symbol indicates that it's a different one also the gauntlets of the necromancer are waiting on the side there so grab those because they're useful for health purposes later now the moment you teleport to the yellow key it's also going to open up a bunch of iron liches and i'm going to run away from them as quickly as possible because we don't really have the greatest weaponry to fight those right now there's also an ophidian shooting at me which is not great we are instead just going to go to these elevators to kill a couple gargoyles waiting for us up here followed by another elevator with a were dragon up top but also a dragon claw and the dragon claw is quite lovely shot me in the face there but that's unfortunate but not terrible and eh, 27 health pretty good <laughs> we are just going to slowly move on given our health situation i'm going to take this quite carefully because i think a were dragon could actually one shot me at this point as their damage output is quite substantial from time to time eh, there we go and in this next area i kind of want to use my tome of power I said in the previous level that they didn't really do the thing where you have to shoot a wall that often to continue, but also in this level they decided to do it, so maybe they just figured out that's a thing somewhere along this line, which is fair enough. I'm just gonna sit here, shoot some snakes, and as we move along, every time we shoot one of those things, it's going to show a couple more snakes to shoot. Usually it's only one, but there's actually a pretty substantial amount of them at the end of the hallway over here. And I do actually quite like using the Morph Ovum that we got from that non-secret secret area in order to just get rid of a lot of them that way. But we're just going to wait here for a while because I might actually use the Tome of Power here as well to get some of my health back. Just throw an egg in there. It really didn't go in the direction that I wanted to, unfortunately. 
So that kind of sucks, but we can do this. Use a Tome of Power. They should go around the corner any second now. There we go. And provided that you just keep them in a line like this, they'll be shooting at each other's backs the whole time, so you can quite safely do this for a while. There is still a chicken there, so I will switch to this weapon. I'd actually go for Dragon Claw here, thinking about it, but I do like having a little bit of Dragon Claw ammo for later, so... Just gonna use a couple of those spiky balls to clear this hallway out. Move onwards while the Tome of Power is still active to shoot down with my crossbow, because there is a whole bunch of Ophidians that were shooting us previously. And before you know it, everything's dead, and we can move on. Currently, we can't really do anything here except for grabbing the Hell Staff and the Flight Power Up. But the Hell Staff is always quite useful, of course. But there is a button at the top of this area. And I believe the Hell Star, the Fire Mace, rather, can spawn there as well. So that is nice. But that button lowers the platform to reach the green key, which is waiting for us over here. And I'm actually just going to keep our mystic urn selected because most of the times these enemies are not great at actually shooting up but sometimes they're deciding that they can actually <laughs> so this is not the most consistent method of dealing with these enemies but whatever it works it works well enough most of the time but we are picking up this green key which also opens up the stairs to reach the green key door which we uh, haven't actually seen yet I'm just going to grab our Shadow Sphere because we do have the weaponry available now to fight the various Iron Liches here. I will just take care of this particular Wear Dragon first. And then switch to the Shadow Sphere combined with our wonderful Dragon... I cannot remember the life of me, for the life of me what this weapon is called. Dragon something. Just uh, believe, just take my word for it. I'm just going to shoot these guys with my blue gun. And do it quite carefully. There is a decent amount of liches here after all, but for the most part they're just going to be shooting in random directions and their things are not going to be homing in on me. I'm kind of too far away from them right now, so I might try to get a little bit closer. The two were dragons have actually lowered now, which is not ideal thinking about it due to the fact that with this shadow sphere their attacks are going to be a little bit erratic. But that's okay. Dragon Claw, that's what the thing is called. That was going to bother me for the rest of my life otherwise. Anyway, there's a bag of holding here. Should have grabbed that significantly earlier because my ammo situation was getting quite bad there. <laughs> but that's okay. There's plenty of ammo here to recharge our weapons again. There is still a whole bunch of wear dragons here. This is the area with the liches that also have quite a significant amount of ammo and health power-ups available, so that is lovely. And since they are behind these weird pillar things, you can quite safely shoot them with hitscan weaponry. Most of the time, sometimes they do manage to get a shot in from annoying angles, but it is what it is. But yeah, over here the fire mace can also spawn if you don't have it already. So we're just going to take our time here. I could actually just probably do this. Which is obviously not the safest method, as I immediately took a hit there, but... I mean, sometimes you just gotta do what's fun instead of what's safe. And that's what we're doing right now. There we go. So with our green key in hand, we can go to the green key door, which up to this point we have not yet seen. But it is behind one of these two banners. You can go through each of them, but both of them house a fire gargoyle waiting for it. And the Fire Mace can also spawn in front of this door. Now this level is called the Great Stair. And you can't have a level called the Great Stair without a really big staircase. And that's, that's what this area is all about. Just a whole bunch of stairs. And a Molotov. <laughs> so we are just going to aggro that. Go back down. Try and collect as much ammo for various weaponry as possible. And try not to die. That's really the main thing. I'm going to throw a couple hourglasses here to hopefully deal pretty substantial damage to the saber claws and things. Go back upstairs to press a button that was behind the Molotar. And grab our health staff. And we're just going to wait here for a while. Because there's, this is not the worst way to kill the Molotar. By just sitting on top of these stairs. And uh, taking a whole bunch of fireballs in the face. But preferably without the fireballs... But roughly around the time that he starts using his 
close range, I'm gonna die instantly attack. I'd actually like to use this uh, chaos device here, which I'm just gonna do right now. Because even though I said previously this is a pretty good way to do it, it was not working out. <laughs> it was not working out at all. But picking up the blue key, which has lowered um, after we touched that button behind him, I'm just actually gonna move on a little bit back again because near the hell staff was a wall that looked a little bit differently. And that wall opens up after pressing that button as well, or after picking up the blue key, I don't really know. But this is going to take us to the top of the staircase again, so that is nice. I'm just going to use this flask, get my invincibility ready, because I don't know where the Molotar is right now, and I'm a little bit frightened. But also, after picking up that uh, blue key, I believe, it opens up a lot of doorways. And I am just going to willy-nilly jump into this one right here. Uh, grab the phoenix rod, shoot it wildly at just about everything in the area, and use one of my good old-fashioned tomes of power, fire mace, not fire mace, phoenix rod combination attacks to deal with the remaining health of that molotar, and then also the remaining disciples that were hiding inside the walls here. Uh, let's see if we can just get a couple more good hits in. We can always switch to the fire mace if need be. Preferably not die to these enemies randomly. Because it would be a silly place to die out of all the various places you can die in this level. Because this is actually a pretty tricky level in a lot of places. Mostly due to the sheer amount of were dragons and my... Just... I just don't want to be safe around them. I just want to run into them and shoot them with a crossbow. And that's just a lot more fun to me. Which is why... Yeah, this, it doesn't always go well for me, <laughs> but there's a lot of items here. But I believe that is more or less everything. I'm just gonna go back upstairs. Now that we have the blue key, we can go through this door. There's still a couple of gargoyles waiting for us, but overall not the scariest thing in the world. And with that, that should be everything. That should be all kills and secrets. The fire mace can spawn right there. And with that, Onward to the next level. This, ugh, this, yeah, this one's tricky, mostly just due to the sheer amount of were dragons. But if you can get past all of them, then this level's not too bad. That's really the main thing. If you can sort of dodge around were dragons, then you'll be fine. If not, gonna be a tricky one, unfortunately. But there's a lot of instances where you can just take it very safe and wait for them to come down or hide behind pillars and stuff like that, and played a lot safer. But I like being just completely reckless instead, and sometimes that works out until you um, record a run that works, so fair enough. Onwards to episode 4, mission 6, Halls of the Apostate. Apostate? Now the start of this level is pretty exciting, and there's a lot of safe ways to do it, but we're gonna do it the worst possible way, which is to just run inside the room like a madman, quickly press this button to lower some elevators, Get on this one right here and jump on this platform to get the Shadow Sphere. And from here I'm just going to be shooting some gargoyles for a moment. If you look to your left you might have seen some uh, Iron Lich projectiles there because there is an Iron Lich in the next room and my weapon choices are limited to Elven Wand, uh, Staff and the Gauntlets of the Necromancer. So not ideal, but hopefully the Saber Claws can help us out at least a little bit. I can hear the attack sound, so someone's attacking something. And the Iron Lich is also attacking something, so something's going on there. It should be like at least two iron, like two Saber Claws, I think. Which might be infighting, because usually there's like three here, unless you get one to lower with the elevator, but yeah, fair enough. They were at it for a while. But they have unfortunately finished, concluded their actions there, so I'm just gonna try and kill the Saber Claw. And then in a second, we're going to shoot off the remaining health with the lots and lots of ammo that's lying over here. Because this particular gem is worth 75 ammo and that one over there as well. So odds are we're not going to run out of ammo. I will just use the gauntlets because my health is actually surprisingly good for what all just transpired. <laughs> Usually I'm at like 12 health at this point, but this time around the game's feeling nice. So I'm just going to stand over here and wait for the Iron Lich to show his face. I, I guess this face is more or less his entire body, but we can quite safely stand here and just hold the attack button. <laughs> oh my god, the Saber Claws did so much damage! 
That's it. That's absurd, actually, because that should take so much longer. And uh, it's not a very exciting sight, but the Saber Claw, for some reason, the Iron Lich was just not killing the Saber Claw. Like, I don't know what was going on there. It was kind of hard to see because it was behind a wall, but yeah, fair enough. And we got a Morph Oven from that. This backpack lowers the moment you step into this room. I will get it in just a second, but first we are going to try and get that crossbow over there through the means of just hoping, uh, really. That's, that's more or less the strategy here. Health is not, like, super necessary from this point on. Like, there is a little bit of a luck factor in the thing I'm going to do next because, quite frankly, my strategy for this level is entirely based on excitement and not on waiting around, so... Uh, in a second, I'm actually just going to grab this, which lowers two walls right here. And both of these walls have an extra little compartment where you can go inside and kill a Disciple of the Sparrow. This particular one was guarding a Mystic Urn. He was sitting on it. And that means that my health situation is actually probably pretty good right now same on this side i think this is actually like a one-way wall as well like you can't actually look through this from the other side so otherwise this disciple would just be shooting you while you're trying to press this button right there i'm curious if you can press this button from this side but it's ultimately i think inconsequential probably i actually don't know for sure but it doesn't matter too much either way I'm just going to shoot that saber claw for a second because I had shot him for a while. Now that we have the backpack, we can grab this ammo bit as well because we can grab twice as much. And with that, we can quite safely move on to this next area. I think I'm going to just use this. Actually, I'm just going to use the egg because I got an egg from the Iron Lich, so that was lucky. Might as well just destroy these with the egg. Otherwise, I would have used the gauntlets, but you know what? This works. Just have some fun with it. Jumping down, there is one Disciple of Despero on the other side there. There is also some lava that's jumping up from time to time, and that's going to be relevant in just a second. Because when we press this button, it's going to raise the walkway, and when we press this button, we are, I think, opening portals? I actually never checked out what that button does. To our right is an Iron Lich. We mostly just need to be careful that we don't get hit by the lava projectile, but I do kind of want to kill this Iron Lich right now. So we're just going to do just that. This Iron Lich can't shoot all of his projectiles at us. Like the tornadoes aren't actually going to be reaching us. So that is nice. But the lava things, the ice projectiles and the fire attacks that he does are all very capable of actually hitting you like that. So you need to be at least a little bit careful. Now, okay, that's what you don't want to see really. As long as that doesn't happen too much, we should be okay, and he should be dead pretty quickly. Also, there's a quiver over there, apparently. So that is nice. There we go. That guy's dead. That's mostly a problem for later, but it's nice to just have him out of the way. So, this is odd. In, in this room, there's the yellow key, and if you grab it, uh, seven saber claws spawn into the room and try to kill you. But opposite to the four corners of this platform and the three remaining sides is where the saber claws actually are and they're hiding behind these invisible like uh, like these fake walls so you can actually just shoot a couple times into each of these rooms right here without really being able to see in there which is going to make this trap significantly less exciting because they're most likely all going to be dead or close to dead by the time they're actually going to come out here. And, uh, yeah, it makes us a lot safer. That guy nearly died. That one also died in one more hit. And then this one somehow didn't take any damage at all from my shots, I think. The rooms are quite small, but they have... They're like trumpet-shaped, basically, so it's very possible that you're just going to be missing your shots at them. But it's odd. It's, it's odd that they are there at all <laughs> and that you can shoot them like that. But fair enough, I suppose. Using those teleporters, we can get back. There is also two health power-ups on each side. I'm actually just going to grab that one. Took a surprising amount of damage, but I think I might have gotten hit by one of the uh, jumping lava projectiles there. But with this yellow key, we can go through this yellow door where there is a quite significant amount of these gargoyles waiting for us. I'm going to use a shadow sphere that I picked up 
at the start of the level to fight this particular Iron Lich just because there's not really going to be a better time to use this thing so might as well. Makes life a little bit easier if we just stand here and occasionally dodge something. Now he dropped an egg but there is normally an egg there as well and you can actually get that egg as well once we destroy some of the enemies here because there is a secret door. Not actually a secret but secret enough for me that you can go through. And if we look over here, you can see a ring of invincibility down there. So we're just going to jump down there and grab that as well. Because that is going to make a future room just significantly easier. Due to the fact that we cannot die. Really helps out a lot. So the green key is up there. This is the area where the um, disciple was standing on the other side of. I'm just going to press that button. Which is going to lower a couple of areas. That guy couldn't actually see me because of the invisibility, I guess. Which is pretty cool. And just gonna take care of this one with our fancy new dragon claw. That button should lower the key or open a door. It does something cool, almost certainly. Either way, I'm gonna press this button to lower the elevator to the green key door and move on. Over here, just a couple of gargoyles, nothing too fancy. I might actually use my Tome of Power for this next room. Nah, there's really no real point, but at the same time, I'm trying to think of where I should use the Tome of Power. Now, thinking about the rest of the level, actually, I have a better idea, because this is just a bunch of gargoyles. Like, nothing's really exciting going on here. So, we're just going to take all these down, press this switch to open that scary-looking wall with a singular Disciple of the Sparrow behind it, but more importantly, a Hell Staff. And with that health staff, we can kill the remaining enemies here. Um, I guess I can use an egg here. Why not? Boop. I selected the egg. One thing that I keep doing is uh, selecting the item rather than actually using them because it's an extra button press that you have to do for that. And it's, uh, it's tedious is what it is. And I'm making the same mistake repeatedly, but really that's not me. Inventory systems were very new at the time. And quite frankly, the fact that this is, exists at all is... A technological masterpiece. So you know what? I'm not gonna complain about it anymore. Instead, just going to move on to this room, which also has a lot of gargoyles. Again, our weaponry at this point is quite significantly more powerful than gargoyles, so not really much of a problem if you hold the attack button for a little bit. However, this is the room where I would like to have the Ring of Invincibility, due to the fact that if you pick up this blue key, Suddenly, there is quite a significant amount of Disciples of Despair suddenly surrounding you. And you can quite easily just lure them to the door at the start. Like, you can just open the door, grab the key, and then run through the door. But at the same time, I don't really have a better place to use this Ring of Invincibility, so I might as well just go wild in this room and just destroy them all like this, because it's quite a lot quicker. And I like it that way. Plus, otherwise, we're never going to be using our Ring of Invincibility, so that's nice. We got a blue key. This blue key can take us up there using the slowest elevator in this game. Eventually, it goes back up. I guess it's just on a timer. So that's cool. And over here, I'm going to use my um, Tome of Power. Because there is a couple of Disciples of the Sparrow here, and this is actually quite effective at dealing with the whole lot of them. And at the same time using more or less all of my Dragon Claw ammo. It's probably not the most cost-effective solution in the world, but it works. There is two switches here, which probably do something cool. I think it opens up the level exit, actually, thinking about it. That seems most likely. Because that button right there is the level exit. Now that our Tome of Power is still active, I can quite easily destroy the remaining Saber Claws here. If not, I could jump down into the water and get yet another Tome of Power. So all in all, not really in any danger here, but it um, seemed to last a perfect amount of time there, so quite nice. Both, of, both sides have an elevator which can get you back up to this area. And with that, we can just enter the exit room, which is going to lower two elevators, one on each side. This particular one has the dead iron lich that we killed earlier on the bridge with all the lava falling down. And I th probably we're missing one more item and it's on the other side of the lava bridge, which is also another health flask, which I'm not going to bother with. But if all things went well, we have all kills and secrets and I'm going to go to the next level. All in all, 
once you get past the start, there's not that much danger, but that saber claw trap can very easily destroy you if you don't know it's coming because suddenly you're entirely surrounded by them because they all just spawn in effectively the same corners as their rooms are, I suppose. And that can very much deal a lot of damage to you immediately, so... Being able to shoot through the invisible walls is odd, but since you also get like five hourglasses going over that bridge, you can also just throw a bunch of hourglasses in the room and that more or less destroys them as well if you time it right, so... It's not really that scary. The main part is just killing an Iron Lich with an Elven Wand and... In this particular case, apparently having a Saber Claw kill him almost entirely. I mean, sometimes things just work out and I'm happy when they do. But with that, we are going to Episode 4, Mission 7, The Ramparts of Perdition. So this level can get pretty hectic pretty quickly. Over here is somewhat of an unfinished jumping puzzle with a bunch of pillars that are slightly lower than the other one so it doesn't quite work. We will be pressing buttons to raise these pillars so we can get the hell staff later, but for now we are going to use this particular one to get that hourglass, lower that wall which is actually an elevator, and grab this crossbow very carefully and leave the hourglass over there. Now. Provided you don't shoot your weapon during that, most of those gargoyles are not going to be active, so you can get it quite safely. And that makes this area significantly more tolerable than otherwise, because this place is just a mess with a whole bunch of enemies all over the place. And it's quite easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of stuff that's going on here with the low amount of weapons that we currently have. But with all that said and done, I'm actually going to go grab this armor power up real quickly and also some more ammo for the crossbow there. <laughs> and moving on to kill this wear dragon as it is a little bit tedious as it's shooting us the entire time, but also for later when we want to get that hell staff. It's nice to just get him out of the way. So first we are going to go up here. There's a couple of disciples on that side, but hopefully we can get some of the saber claws to fight them. That would be nice. There is also a bunch of gargoyles over here. There's a button that raises one of the pillars in the jumping puzzle, and also I believe the fire mace can spawn in this area as well. This button also raises one of the pillars, which is going to be useful later. And now we're just going to shoot a couple of the were dragons, which we can fight quite safely behind these barrels, provided you don't get hit by the disciples there. So I'm just actually going to go up here and press that third button just to feel safe. You don't really need to do this, but, you know, it never hurts. So just press that for the last pillar to raise. You can do a diagonal jump over here rather than doing the regular path, but whatever works. So over there is a flask, which we're, or not a flask, a... Uh, 10 health power up, but also a secret area behind this fake wall, which leads to a morph oven, which is going to be useful later. And this teleports us to the gauntlets, which we could have just gone to by jumping there, but we didn't. Now, down there is a Disciple of the Sparrow. I'm just going to ignore him for now. There's actually quite a lot going on, and I'm actually going to go somewhat off the beaten path here, because... I think technically you're not actually supposed to do this, but you can actually strafe jump to that side there. And it's it's pretty tight, but it's not too impossible, so it's like, eh. And there is, uh, I'm going to show off the regular way to get there as well later, but I find that just doing this first is just nice to get it out of the way. So we're going to go down here, kill a couple of saber claws and get some more crossbow ammo as well. And pretty much use it on these saber claws because they don't really feel like dying right now, but that's okay. It is what it is. When we touch the water, um, that thing is going to go down. And when we touch that, it is going to lower this wall as well. But that wall only lowers once and there's a secret behind it. So I'm going to just try to do this right because... Once you lower it from this side, it's yours forever to keep. It just stays lowered. That's wonderful. But if you miss it, then that's that's it. It's, it's done. And that's also one of the reasons why I just like to do this part first, because I don't want to have to redo a whole large part of the level. So jumping down here makes the yellow key actually go down, so we can once again make the elevator go up. Um, grab the key here. Use our morph oven that we picked up 
from the secret area. There is also a couple of disciples behind me right now, which is not great. We could just use a hell staff, I suppose, but the uh, crossbow is doing its job just fine. But having the morph ovum for that particular fight just makes it a little bit nicer. Also, I believe the fire mace can also spawn up there, if I am correct. Somewhere in this room, at least. So this door opens. You can get a map scroll over there. Over here is a Disciple of the Sparrow, which I think I pointed out earlier. And there's a bunch of lava. There is Phoenix Rod ammo. I'm not going to get it. I'm just going to go get that urn and leave. Because we don't particularly need the extra Phoenix Rod ammo this time around. <laughs> Rather just have all that. There is a quiver over there as well on the corner, but it's an elevator. And it goes down when you step on it, and I don't really want to bother with it, if I'm honest. Not until these guys are dead. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to try and kill these guys while I'm over here anyway, because why not? With the health staff, it should be doable at least. Now, standing over here, you can press this button. But if you stand in front of the switch, then you lower the wall that has those disciples behind it. You can press the button without lowering it, but I was being in a bit of a rush because of those disciples at the top there. So, you know what, it is what it is. Instead, I will once again shoot these disciples, hope to deal enough damage to get rid of them. Otherwise, we can deal with them from a slightly more normal angle by just going there, but that's okay. We managed to figure it out in the end. So moving on, uh, because we pressed that button, I guess uh, this disciple decided to go outside because there is a small bridge here. And we are going to also take that small bridge to try and enter this new area. This time around with a yellow key, which again, technically you're not supposed to have at this point just yet, but that's fine. It does make life a little bit nicer in terms of navigation through this level. But if you want to get the regular key normally, what you have to do is walk to the closed yellow door and that will open a teleporter that will take you to the other side of the... Uh, the area. I might as well just show it off. It just takes you here. And it's kind of odd, to be honest, that you need to walk to the yellow door for that thing to open. But you know what? That's, that's video games for you. <laughs> that's just how these things work from time to time. And... Uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty easy one to miss, and more than likely you're just gonna try to strafe jump it, because it is... It's not too hard, but the angle on it can be a little bit fiddly, so it's like, eh. It's easy to mess up, but not impossible for sure. Anyway, just find some rare dragons from down here. There's a couple of sort of secret things in this room. But first, I'd like to have everything be dead, and this angle's just a little bit more convenient, because we are gonna go over here. I'm just quickly checking out my notes where the uh, other f fire maces were. Don't worry about it. Uh, going over here, we can either jump to this side, which will open up, and then picking up this quiver. This teleports you back to the gauntlets or whatever that was. But this has now also opened, which is actually a secret area and has a couple of enemies behind it. And a tome of power which is pretty great as you can see there was also an ammo power up on the other side there so we're just once again going to do that only to the other direction and then fail and then once again try the nice thing about jumping puzzles like this is that you can just keep trying forever there we go and there is a singular purple flask doesn't count as a secret but also a uh, four disciples of the sparrow here which is uh, quite annoying to deal with but again, not really the scariest thing in the world. We have the weapons for it right now. The hell staff is plenty, but the crossbow does an okay job at it as well from time to time. There we go. But we're mostly doing this for the kills. Otherwise, you might as well just not even bother because it's not really worthwhile. Anyway, since we got the yellow key, we can go inside here. Actually, you know what? I forgot a thing. I was wondering why I was having trouble hitting them, but it's because I haven't picked up the Dragon Claw yet. And the Dragon Claw is waiting over here, where we previously were shooting those Disciples from outside. And from over here, you can quite easily destroy the Disciples as well, just because uh, the angle is just a lot better. You don't have to try to shoot around a pillar the entire time without hitscan weapons, so there you go. This is the green key, 
but it is currently on a raised platform. And the way to lower the green key is by entering this room. There we go, we did it. Ignore the sounds of the disciples in the background there, it's probably nothing to worry about as we grab the green key, run into this disciple instead and uh, pretty much get destroyed in one hit because he decided to do a high damage roll. But this is also a secret area. You can just re-enter this one, this is not one that stays closed forever, but after you enter it, there's going to be a couple gargoyles you have to deal with. Not really the scariest thing in the world, but if you're not ready for it, you can get kind of spooked for a second there, so fair enough. Um, alright, so I guess we should probably deal with those disciples that we let out of their cage earlier, because I suppose when we um, entered that room with the blue key door, that did kind of happen. So we're just gonna shoot some ammo of the good old-fashioned hitscan weaponry behind this very safe yellow key door pillar that is protecting us from more or less every attack that they can shoot at us, so... All in all, I'm not too concerned about this battle. That guy also tries, but can't quite hit us because we keep shooting him away from us. And I guess that one went outside somewhere along the line because we ran away from the arena. It's all fair enough. Nothing to worry about here. So, along with the green key lowering, it also opened up these two areas. And the first one has a bunch of gargoyles behind it and an elevator which can take you upstairs here. And over here there is an urn and I believe the fire mace can spawn on both sides of this area. And of course that also means that there is an elevator on this side which is more or less the same. It has a torch, don't worry about it. And over here there is a teleporter which takes you to the green key door and also some of the disciples and saber claws that we saw hopefully inviting previously but honestly it's been a while who knows if these guys were infighting at any point in time the fact that these disciples are still alive means it probably wasn't even fighting going on at all but there's a button here that lowers the power-ups on this side of the room and there's a button here that lowers the power-ups on this side of the room and that is just lovely now, since we have the green key, because we didn't immediately go there, also, I believe the fire mace can spawn over here, so cool. Let's just go inside here. There is a couple enemies here, but not really anything to worry about. I'm just going to use my Tome of Power, because I kind of forgot to use it anywhere else. And this actually deals with a pretty substantial amount of gargoyles if you use it here, so pretty great to use it right here. And just going to press this button to get to the blue key which is going to unleash a couple more gargoyles nothing really scary going on here just a bunch of flying little enemies that occasionally shoot a fireball as well but for the most part no concerns at all i also just like to point out that this looks like a phoenix and i just think it looks neat really it also deals damage when you walk over it so don't stay on it for too long it doesn't deal a lot of damage, I guess, so it doesn't really matter. But I think, like, even with the, the lighting at the top there, I just think it looks really neat, so... Good job of making a neat-looking thing, I suppose. We're just gonna move on, though. Because we mostly just came there for the blue key, which we now have acquired. I just remembered a thing I forgot, um... Which is, there is a Shadow Sphere in this level, and it's right here. And it just allows you to teleport back up again. And the Shadow Sphere is actually gonna be pretty great later on. With later on, I mean, like, very, very soon. So I'm actually uh, happy that I remembered to get that. Otherwise, I would have been a little bit irritated, I think. Going in here, I'm going to use another Tome of Power because there is yet another one over here. Mostly for the uh, quite large amount of Saber Claws here. I just like to get it over with. It just saves a lot of time. And uh, that way I don't have to worry about things so much. At the same time, I think I'm going to wait for this thing to run out. Because there is a couple of Iron Liches down there. There's also a Flight Power-Up. And I'm going to use this Flight Power-Up to just jump up here and press this switch. And also grab this, because that more or less opens up everything. And the nice thing about opening up everything is that there is a couple... That's not a Phoenix Rod. There's a couple of things here, one of which is the things that I want to use a Shadow Sphere for, which is these Iron Liches. But it also opens up all these gargoyles. It just pretty much opens up every single remaining enemy in the level. And it's just nice to get it out of the way. If you don't press that button with the flight, you'll have access to three of the five 
iron liches, so it's like, it's not too bad not to use it. But I mean, I might as well. There's no real reason not to use it at this point. I'm not sure if anything actually survived that because I sort of jumped right in the middle there and sometimes these enemies have a tendency to sort of fall in weird ways, but I think we should be okay. But over here, there is a button which lowers the front elevator forever. And then on this side, there is also a button which temporarily lowers this elevator. So if you don't have the flight power up anymore, you can actually just jump out of the window there and do it this way instead. Anyway, we got our kills and secrets. This is the last place where a fire maze can spawn. And we're just going to call it a day. All in all, I think this level's pretty cool. I think it's super chaotic at the start. And once you know that you can get the crossbow without shooting, <laughs> that definitely makes the starter level a lot easier because otherwise you are basically stuck just camping next to doors for a while trying to get rid of enemies. So it's nice that there is a way to not make it super tedious. Also, the bird just looks really nice. I think the level looks really cool and there's a couple different routes you can take. The one-time secret, don't really care for that, but you know what? That's probably just me. But with that, we will be going to the final level of this episode. Episode 4, Mission 8, Shattered Bridge. Alright, the last level of the episode. First of all, just gonna run towards this backpack. The moment we leave this area, that wall is going to open and reveal a whole bunch of golems. So I am just gonna run outside, look at the Shattered Bridge and the uh, quite large amount of golems. And we're going to shoot the golems here with the dragon claw that is laying right outside. Makes this area a little bit easier to deal with and it gives us four hour glasses and an armor power up. There is also a disciple somewhere out here which is usually just flying around. And there is also a disciple inside this staircase. There's a bunch of golems inside the moat and there is a bunch of golems that are quite clearly outside. There's also another disciple over here. And I'm just going to stand over here for a second because usually the ones in the moat will eventually just reach this area and if you're standing here there's going to be a lot of fireballs flying in this direction and are usually going to hit a pretty substantial amount of golems like this. Otherwise we can also use the hourglasses that we have at our disposal to deal with a large amount of the golems because they will just all try to go through the door here. And watch out for golems that occasionally manage to actually get out there as well. Because sometimes one of the golems will just take the stairs up and go all the way around and ambush you from behind. So, find that. But overall, not the scariest thing in the world if you can manage to survive this first part. You can quite safely snipe the ones up here like this. Because they are just failing repeatedly. That disciple is somehow still alive, but there we go. And there is a lot more dragon claw ammo waiting for us over here. Now the shattered bridge, there's a couple ways to cross it. The main way is to just unshatter it and I'll get to that in a second. But first, we're just going to deal with these remaining enemies because there is still a decent amount of them alive. But they have done a little bit of infighting here and there. So some of them are a li little bit lower health than others. So that is nice. Just be careful of the many faces and screams flying in your direction and you should be okay. You can see some of the bridge actually start to raise right now, and that is by something that I am doing, which I will get to in just a moment. But the main way to do it is usually happens quite naturally by shooting at the golems. I actually raised most of the bridge somehow, so fair enough. Because there's a couple ways to cross it. First of all, you can actually just strafe run it. Like if you just stand here and do this, you, you will just bounce to the other side. There is some wind to take, uh, like to take into consideration, but other than that, is not too scary but the actual way to raise the bridge is by there's a couple of moving platforms over there and if you shoot those it is going to make a segment of the bridge go up and that way you can actually raise the entire bridge as well by just shooting all of the different parts but whatever you want to do it is entirely up to you so there's a bunch of platforms once again going up and down you can shoot them to raise the bridge but you can also ride them upwards and there is a couple of neat things. First of all, we're going with the one furthest to the left. Mostly just trying to stay as far away from the door as possible. Because the ones next to the door actually lead to a different area. Whereas all the other ones are quite connected to each other. There is a crossbow on the furthest left one. And there are these walls that you can open up 
which leads you to the elevator that is right next to you, basically. And that way, you speed up the process of not actually having to go up every single one of the elevators. Makes this significantly less irritating to do, which is uh, a nice little gesture. And there's a couple power-ups that you can pick up this way as well. But for the most part, we're just going to be dealing with all the enemies here. There's a chaos device which can be useful depending on how you deal with the final battle of this level, which can be a tricky one, but if you know that it's coming, it becomes significantly less scary. Also, when you jump off of a platform here, this area is actually going to lower, like that one right there. And we will deal with that in a second because we do need to go there at some point. But first, I'm going to deal with the remaining elevators that we can just get to naturally. Probably should have gone with the furthest one to the right because that way you don't get shot by a uh, nitro golem like I just did. But that's okay. There is also a hell staff if you take the other elevator. But you can also get there like this, just like on the other side. And if we can just do as much damage as possible to these enemies... Using the crossbow here is a little tedious just due to the fact that it, the projectiles have a tendency to hit the walls next to you because it's also like squished into each other. But the health staff is nice. We're just going to jump down here to lower this. Again, you can jump down every single one of these platforms and it will make this thing go down. So do whichever one you like and eventually you'll find that this is actually a place where you need to go because there's a wall here that you can't interact with. But if you fall off the ledge or almost fall off the ledge, this thing opens, there is one disciple behind it, but also the yellow key, which you actually need to beat the level. So, that's pretty important. Now this time around, I'm gonna take the elevator that's closest to the door. You can take either one, really. But it's nice to go here like this, because this leads to the same area that the door would. But there is kind of an important thing if you're going for all kills, which is... First of all, there's a couple, like, uh, ghost golems up here. But there's also a lot of gargoyles here, and if you go through the door, then sometimes the gargoyles will follow you through the door, and it just takes a whole bunch of time to um, try and find enemies afterwards. So I kind of like taking care of them like this, but at the same time, they are a little treacherous to kill with the angle that you're getting from up here. But at the same time, you're dealing with all the golems at, at the same time like this. So There's ups and downs. There's a lot of reasons to do it and not to do it. You can also just walk through the door. But, eh, whatever you prefer. Also, once again, a wall to open over here, which has a Shadow Sphere, which can also be very useful depending on how you do the final fight. And that is going to explain itself uh, pretty shortly. We've killed a lot of enemies already. I'm just going to grab a couple of health power-ups here before we move on. And I'm going to use one flask. I'm going to use my Tome of Power in a second, because there is three ghostly undead warriors, and I do like taking care of them with the powered up crossbow like this. Could probably just put one rain cloud in there with the health staff thinking about, and that would do just fine, but I'd rather I just kill them like this, because that's the strategy I remembered, and that's more important. Going through here, because we haven't gone there yet, there is a couple of ghost golems on either side. There's a couple walls that we can open as well, which lead to a secret area. And there is also a secret area on the other side, but I also like having the powered up crossbow for this fight right here, just due to the fact that it's just a whole bunch of gargoyles. And it really does speed up the process by just shooting a whole bunch of powered up crossbow bolts at them like this. One more golem on the other side. I will get there in a second anyway, so might as well keep him alive a little longer as we just run in that direction. Did we actually get him? Maybe I actually killed him there. But this is the third and final secret of the level. We should be at 89 out of 98 kills, and we are, so that's good. And coming up next is the final battle of this place. And definitely the easiest strategy that you can do is, uh, first of all, press this button and then go through the door, which is going to raise these two walls. And definitely the easiest strategy is to just use a uh, Ring of Invincibility and a Shadow Sphere and then just start blasting. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna press the button and stand next to this torch, which is going to wake up a lot of Iron Liches. And then I'm just gonna run in circles for a moment with our health staff and just shoot in that rough direction. This is uh, primarily just going to get them really close to each other. And then when you wait just a little bit longer, I'm going to switch to the Phoenix Rod and try to only shoot them when they are not like really close to me <laughs> is the main idea so I do not get hit by the splash damage. It's gonna make you a little bit dizzy to do it like this, but at the same time, 
this general movement is quite useful when you're trying to deal with them even with the Shadow Sphere and Ring of Invincibility. But yeah, using those two items definitely makes this fight a lot easier. Another strategy that you can use is the Chaos Device, because even though the walls raised when we entered that area, we can just go back there and press the button again. And as long as we don't actually cross this thing, then these walls will just stay lowered and you can actually just fight them from the door if you so desire. It's going to take a long time just because the angle is just super tedious. Although you could probably just sit behind this torch and dragon claw them if you have the ammo for it. So there's definitely a lot of ways that you can get around to doing this fight. And I just think that's really neat. Anyway, we're just going to let that raise again and we are going to leave this level and finish episode 4 with all kills and secrets. You thought you would return to your own world after Disparal died, but his final act banished you to his own plane. Here you entered the shattered remnants of lands conquered by Disparal. You defeated the last guardians of these lands, but now you stand before the gates to Disparal's stronghold. Until this moment you had no doubts about your ability to face anything you might encounter. But beyond this portal lies the very heart of the evil which invaded your world. The sparrow might be dead, but the pit where he was spawned remains. Now you must enter that pit in the hopes of finding a way out, and somewhere in the darkness, in the darkest corners of the sparrow's domain, his personal bodyguards await your arrival. And that concludes episode 4. I just think, I think it's really cool. But I also had kind of a bad experience with it in casual play, just due to the fact that some of the levels are just really out there. Especially the secret one, but I suppose that one's so well hidden that <laughs> you might accidentally skip it anyway, so it's like, eh. But that secret level is, is a rough one out of all the ones. Like, the lighting is just very irritating to look at, and it's... It's just hallways of enemies, and that's really the, the main downside. But the rest of the... Like, playing through it again and actually knowing where to go, it does make the levels very cool, actually. Like, especially just level 1, trying to get all of the kills there. is a pretty interesting challenge just because of that Molotar and... Pretty much everything after Mission 5 is just really great. I think some of the designs are just really well done, but... I don't know, just... That's speaking knowing where all the secrets are, and it's definitely a very different experience if you're playing this for the first time and you don't really know where to go, but... I don't know. All in all, I think it's pretty cool, and I'm looking forward to uh, playing through episode 5. But for now, I hope you have all enjoyed it, and hope to see you all next time when we hopefully play episode 5 of Heretic. And uh, pretty much finish the game. There's a little bit more after that technically, but that's more of a bonus thing. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Either way, hope to see you there. Bye-bye.